The following podcast has been brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up now using the URL audibletrial.com forward slash TTV to get a free audiobook of your choosing. We recommend Brick by Brick, how Lego rewrote the rules of innovation and conquered the global toy industry. You may recognize this as one of the sources we use in our show, Bionicle Autopsy. Remember, that's audibletrial.com forward slash TTV. Enjoy the show. Five, four, three, two, one, sink. sink. Hey everybody, I'm Kahi. I'm Var. I'm Viper. And welcome to TTV Talks. <laughs> Woo! What was with the delay in saying your name, Viper? Did you Sorry, forget who you were? It's been a long day, yeah. <laughs> Viper's like, I don't Dealing even know who Max. I am anymore. Dealing with Max. Who's Max? No, Max is in M A C. Oh, dealing with Max. Yeah, Max. I see. I see. Uh, Wait, okay. is the Mac the reason why your <laughs> your name was delayed? Well, the frustration of it. <laughs> I know I some see. people here will disagree with me, but wait. So well, what's, I mean, what's, what's frustrating? Yeah, what, what's, what's, what's going, going on? Here? Well, like I'm not used to using them, and like it's a, it can be like some of the commands are completely different. I know, messing up a couple times, and also the saves. There's, I guess, it's just with these Macs I use. Like, so you're having issues with like the buttons and stuff. That's yeah, but also I think it's to do with the actual like Macs that we have. They're like super old. They're really slow as well. Oh wait, so this is like a com- like a school computer then? Because I thought yeah, because yeah. yeah, your your personal computer is a PC. Yeah, I have a PC. I've used PC for most of my life. This oh my is god, the first you hear time that, guys? Macs. It's the hype train for the Netflix show. It's just now pulling in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't date the video. <laughs> yes. I mean, the day. I'm dating the video a day. Cause Shut up. Re- <laughs> Don't date the video. They're not supposed to know when we record Sorry, things. It should right, be ambiguous. Right. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Pretend you didn't hear that audience. You heard no, nothing. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Well, we're excited about... Uh, Let's think of something that we could be excited about in the future. So, like, what, um, come up with, like, a news article. The presidency. No, Donald the Trump way too far president. off in the future. Oh, the, gosh. The new Donald mind Trump flasher elected. from Men in Black came out, so we can now uh, hypnotize our audience. Hypnotism. Anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, well, ba- back anyhow, to topic. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ba- back to, <laughs> back to like, our lives. I guess. Our li- we were talking about Viper's life. No one said, no one asked about you. I'm no one saying, gives a crap I'm, about I'm you. I'm saying ours. I'm saying ours. Like, yeah, cool. Yeah, back to what we were talking about. Go we on. We were talking about Viper's computer issues. It wasn't our I'm lives. I was saying about, like, Macs and stuff. Yeah, right, Macs right. and stuff. Macs and stuff. Do you like using a Mac, honestly? No. No, you don't like it? I mean, it seemed pretty obvious she didn't like it from how she was describing her experience with it. Fair enough. But I mean, Context, Kai. Like- you, uh, this is what happens when you don't listen. This is what happens when you spend too much time talking and not enough time listening. God, he's still my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? I expect you to, uh, your, your bags are outside. I expect you to take them and leave by this afternoon. If, if your bags are still are there, I am trashing Kai? them. Are you not listening? No. I'm keeping the kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Wow. No. Do I not have to pay child support? Awesome. Well, no. Obviously, you still have to pay child support if I'm keeping the oh, kids. in that case... Let's go to court. If you were keeping the kids, then I would court. pay child support. <laughs> <laughs> Insert Jerry Springer. Enough. This is a great uh, Mac enough. discussion. I'm sorry, Viper. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, ten I know, ten. Like, maybe if you were more interesting, you wouldn't have to keep derailing. I know. We're gonna Ouch. Going yeah. off on Get Why don't you just fire me then? <laughs> Get wrecked. You're fired. You're committing, I'm cutting your salary. So this right, is my bye. new thing that I've noticed recently that I keep doing out of habit. Okay. Be- before I used to just tell everybody they're fired, <laughs> and now it's you were fired, and then I'm cutting your salary. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yes, you're fired, you're fired but I'm still and giving you're your also salary. Also, not going to be paid. Yeah, you're fired. Also, you're not getting paid. <laughs> As if, like, I-, I guess it also means I just rehired you after after that because now you're cutting cutting your, your salary. <laughs> anyway, I've rehired you, but for free. You're doing this for free. Yeah, apparently so. I mean, it's a cut, yes. so it's not like you're like getting it completely we have out, but it's just we have done research to indicate that a trained monkey could fill your position so we are training you a paid a trained monkey's wages which is zero dollars and one banana. <laughs> one banana i really like one bananas. banana i appreciate the banana yeah you gotta keep that uh, uh vitamin there's some kind of vitamin hopefully there's no have, brazilian right? wandering spiders in there what are, what are the health benefits of a banana health 
Potassium. Um, potassium. Potassium. There you go. You gotta get that potassium in your diet. I, I guess you, you can like you can poop more if you eat a banana. Does a banana make you poop? Oh, potassium like gives you energy. Potassium. You're thinking make- of fiber. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not. Well, I'm sure. No, I'm no, sure banana has fiber. I'm not even. A, I'm not banana, even. A yeah, health banana has a lot of fiber. It's got three, three G's of fiber. <laughs> so yeah, banana would make you poop. Bananas make you poop. You're gonna get that fi- unless you're like this. Well, I thought you meant like was a TV episode. There you go. That'd be our title. <laughs> bananas make you poop. Talks. I don't know. Bananas I feel like it could be a bit more clever than that though, because like I feel like that's just too obvious. If any, like. For the people that don't know Bananas Making Poop, that might be an interesting title, but I feel like Bananas Making You Poop is like a very common knowledge thing it's that we just common. don't know. Yeah. Okay, sure. Fair enough. So it's right. just like Everybody that title is Bananas Making Poop. Dumb. It's like say, stating something that's just true. It's like the sky is blue. That would be the episode title. It's like, <laughs> it's not, it doesn't really work, except the sky actually isn't blue. It's a reflection of the, wait, no. It's the other way around. The water is a reflection of the sky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're going to say it's reflecting the water. Yeah, right? I was about to say it's reflecting the water. Were you drinking, like, while drinking water? At some point, <laughs> so, like, I remember, the water, like, apparently, that, if that was the case, the water would be blue. Said, oh, no, the sky's just reflecting the water. And I was like, but I'm drinking water right now, and it's clear. Yeah, when you put it, like, in a glass, it'd just be blue. Right, exactly. I mean, I'm sure it there's like water a, out there. It looked like blue. antifreeze. Listen, have you ever gone to, like, one of those super awesome places <laughs> with the water? That's the color. You know what I'm yes. talking about? The color. <laughs> and it's like yes, super thick. Yes, I know exactly and then you what can, you're like, talking float about. on top of it. Why? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All I'm thinking of now is the Dead Sea. Cause that, that's, I think I just, like, I, I, com- I think I mixed two completely, completely different locations up, it. first of all. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> I was I was kind of with you up until you said you can float on top of it, and I was like, "Yeah, I know, Vipers, that would be the dead sea." You got me when it said you could float on top of it. I was just thinking the Dead Sea. I was just like, "Hmm, the Dead Sea." Yeah, the Dead Sea is the one that you can float on, and you can like pee in it, and then the the pee just kind of floats there. And uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't actually like spread like disperse into the water. It just kind of like stays stagnant. In, in that like little so it's like oil yeah it's like oil how oil reacts with water exactly just yeah you put like there. oil in a, in a cup and then you like it, it'll separate and whatever when I was younger I used to think like how beautiful oil was because of the rainbows in it and then I'd like look at it in the sea and I'm like it's so beautiful not realizing how destructive it is to the wildlife you know what's also destructive to the wildlife what is destructive to the wildlife? technology <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming you were going to say someone. <laughs> okay. You know How meta! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You, you really, like... <laughs> mm. <laughs> if you are any ever member of this company, if you are any ever member, swear to god. Alright, we're tying this back, people. You swear to god, that's not very nice. <laughs> oh man, no one's going to know why I'm laughing. I swear to all the time. We are... I'm. Listen, I'm going to talk about this. Okay, sure. What I have sure. In my hand if right now. anyone wondering, this episode was meant to be about technology. Kai had a whole thing planned out, and it, it immediately <laughs> derailed <laughs> by El- by Viper like trying to do her own segue. Why was what, what are you doing, Viper? She wasn't doing her own this segue. Crash just makes perfect. She didn't do a segue. She, you asked like what what was her life like, and she yeah, said, "Yeah, you what? asked me how life was. I was expecting no, I you said, to just hey, be how's like, it going? man." Technology, you know, you're like, how's life? Well, I mean, she, she, like, yeah, she I answered know. your question, dude. If you wanted her to not, no, she's no. I said no. It's busy, all right. And then she was like, oh, because of the max. And then, no, and we we like, asked we asked her to clarify, was, like, why is it busy? No, you asked her to clarify. Okay, well, fine. I, I asked her to clarify. Regardless, the question was answered, and it doesn't matter. Shut up. You suck, dude. Viper, what is your technology? Avatar? Will you kill us all. You talk in the beginning. Hey, so guess what's really cool. <laughs> Sure. Technology. What's really cool? Technology. <laughs> and also... Bananas. iPhones. <coughs> which I now have. I got the new... Like, last week, uh, I stayed up uh, in front of Verizon. I lined up in front of Verizon. I stayed up... Like, I drove my car out there, and I parked it, and I waited all night so I could get the new so iPhone So you got out of the fr- Verizon store, then. That's insane. For whatever reason, I was under the impression that you could only get new iPhone releases from an Apple store. Nope. Okay, well, that's interesting. Nope, because there's two, there's two little Apple stores around the world. There's only two. <coughs> there, I don't. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. There's when I meant there's not like just two. I said there's two little. There's too few. Oh, I there's guess. too few. Too few. I see. I see. I thought yeah. I thought yeah, like there's the number two and then 
the little size. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's no, I mean, there's there's not one close to here. So okay, no, I got I got you. That's interesting. Yeah. So I, I could have gone to my Sprint store like midnight and yeah. got okay. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you have an iPhone, don't it's you? Honestly, Viper? it's super nice. Hmm? It's real nice. You have a you have an iPhone, don't you, Viper? Yes. Oh, cool. That means we all have iPhones. Look at us. We're we're uh, Apple fanboys. You know what really annoys me is when uh, yeah. when I see like an Android person going around okay, and being there like, dude, you have an iPhone. Man, stop Be kissing Apple's butt. Yeah, quit being. <laughs> so, you realize you can customize Android phones, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay, knows thing. you can Everybody customize Android that. phones. <laughs> Everybody says that. How many people actually customize their Android phone? Like, how many people go in and root? The Android phones. I don't know. Well, I mean, the whole point is that I you can do it know. without having to root it. You can just, you know... No, no, like, to get rid of some of the programs, you have to root it. Like, my friend has... He bought it, like, one of the, the Samsung S5s, uh-huh. like, like the Galaxy, and it comes with the Samsung bloatware on it, and he wants to get rid of it, and he has to root it in order to get down. But, like, the, the thing with Android is that you can go and you can root the phone and you can do... Because it's an open source system, you can do what right, you want yeah. if, you, if you feel so inclined. But all the people that I know that use Android haven't done that. Just have Android. My thing is that it's like whenever I meet someone who's really passionate about Android, <clears throat> it's like they're like a freaking Jehovah's Witness. It's like they are every moment of their life and they see you have an iPhone, they're trying to convert you to Android. It's like, listen, dude, yeah. I got I just I don't care. I don't care about either. I will have an Android phone or an iPhone. It depends on whatever is cheapest at the time I get a new phone. I I have a feeling LJ's kinda like that. It's like, like the one thing how is how much he hates Apple. No, he hates Google too. LJ just Google hates LJ, Android, I mean, so. LJ doesn't know anything about technology. He's got like it, a crappy funny, little because LJ, clamshell. Phone. LJ's a freaking. <laughs> LJ hates all like he does. He hates all the big tech companies. Oh well, you know. Yeah. Um. Basically, my thing with Android, why I don't have an Android phone, and why, uh, why I don't like necessarily want one right now, is because I'm a big fan of steve jobs like proponent that every yeah, you're an apple device fanboy. needs to be i'm a, I'm, a, I'm an apple fanboy i'm, you actually I'm are the only a fanboy. here who's actually a fanboy so you're gonna watch the steve jobs movie coming out oh dude i am so in love with the steve jobs movie i read the script it's amazing it's one of the best things i've ever <laughs> I'm read sure i don't think be steve jobs than, is a very uh, that one with person. aston kutcher oh no way better i, I this like one the is... aston kutcher movie i thought it was okay I, th- I thought I it was never okay. It was not it. a bad movie, but it paints this image of Jobs that isn't really accurate, and it's kind of like it was just. It's not nothing interesting is there about it. The the Steve Jobs coming out in October. Uh, you don't want to hold any punches, my right? It's gonna go like all yeah, out. no, no. Steve Wozniak, uh, Steve Wozniak, uh, like actually worked on this film. Like he worked closely with the with this, you know, the scripts and the screenwriter. Mm-hmm. They, they did the book off Walter Isaacson, and it's you read it and it's so. The character Steve Jobs is very, very multi layered. And you, you mean the person, the person, Steve Jobs? Yeah, I'm a, or, I mean his character. You know, his his, his, his uh, persona, personality, his, his personality, personality, his personality, morals. Everything is so you know ingrained in that. But I, kind of like back to what I was saying before. He believed that a device has to be an, an end-to-end system, which means that a company designs the hardware, company designs the software to design the software for the hardware so that everything works all across the board. It's all designed to work with every piece of component that's put mm-hmm. into it. Okay? Yeah. And he did take that a little far with like – and originally Apple produced all their parts and they didn't really outsource them. And he had to con- you know, compromise on that as time went on. But I completely believe that if you have a phone and you have a phone operating system, they both have to develop – right next to each other. The phone you're developing, the operating system has to be developed for that phone in order to have the best user experience. For me, until <laughs> Google really does that, that I'm not going to consider getting an Android. Mm-hmm. They have, um, what's the phone they have? Um, not Nokia. Is it like Motorola? Um, they have... Uh, Samsung. It's the, yeah, Sam, they've got the Samsung Galaxy S, which is their... No, 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 no. no. Samsung is owned by Samsung, not Google. Oh, Samsung Google? Makes that phone. Uh, oh, you're talking about I Google? I don't, does Google, Google have yeah. their own phone? I don't know. I, I know they bought over Motorola, but I don't think they've integrated. If like, they bought over I mean, Moto- Motorola, Motorola then the Android. Moto X is their flagship phone. Right, but the Motorola, like the the Moto- like the the X is Motorola still making that phone. Plus, there's another division of Google that makes Android. They're not they're not developing the the system for that phone. It's not an end to end system. Yeah. that way. So that's my thing. Why I don't go to to Android, and I feel like the design for iOS really holds. Yeah, straight. see that my my thing is that uh, it's that when I see an Android phone, 
personally, just looking at it, it just it looks really ugly. It does. And iOS looks really, really pretty. <laughs> it really and, does. Uh, and then people are like, oh, but you can customize it. I don't want to sit down and figure out how to customize it and make everything look how I want it to. I just want it to look pretty. I don't want to waste that time to customize it. That's too much work you, for it to look the way yeah. I want it to look. I want it to look right out of the box. So iOS is easy. With that said, I mean, I don't have anything against um, Android. Honestly, I was actually considering getting a Samsung uh, Galaxy S6, I believe, before I went to the uh, Sprint store and I got a great discount for uh, the uh, iPhone 6. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I was going for. So I mean, like I don't, I don't really, I'm not dedicated to either one, but iOS just looks so much better. It does, and I'm, I mean, I'm integrated into the system. All my purchases on iOS, you know, all that stuff is on right, iOS. Right? Yeah. They, they yeah, made. He, I saw a guy when I bought my phone. He had an Android. And he's like, I'm going to buy an iPhone now. And Apple released this Move to iOS app that's available on Android, and it's so great. The guy, he puts the two phones together. He said he logged in. You create your Apple ID. You hit OK. And Apple automatically creates like a personal Wi-Fi spot with that phone. And it transfers all the data, all the photos, all the contacts and everything over. And it finds all the, the like the apps that have matching apps. And iOS. so you basically you, – they transfer everything over from your Android phone to the I, your, your iOS phone. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. was a really cool process to watch. And I'm glad they streamlined that. really cool. Yeah. Make that move way simpler. And you know, you, yeah, if you remember, paid for an app on Android, it redeems it in iOS. That's awesome. I yeah, think. I remember Bump Shuffle, like one of these uh, apps earlier on, where you'd like you you go up to someone with the same app and you like choose a picture and you could like pass it over. Oh, you could, to yeah, them. you could bump it. I remember that. Yeah. Hmm. Like, I remember then my dad being came. so enthusiastic about. It. He's like, Beth, look, this amazing app. We can pass photos and like music to each other I'm like yes this has been around for a while now <laughs> it's only just he's like but it's so amazing I remember how amazed my parents were when it came to like, iPhones like more I enthusiastic than I was my, like my parents they like technology but they're very they're not very often like really surprised they're not very good at it. by an app the one app that really caught them like completely off guard it was on Shark Tank. It was the uh, the pan- Panorama app. Do you guys ever get that? The Panorama app? Sounds familiar. I mean, basically, what, what does it do? Because your... there's already built-in Panorama. Right? I know, I know. You take your phone and you put it on a flat surface and you hit the start and your phone will rotate by itself and take a what? panoramic picture. Yes. It does this because you know how like your phone can vibrate? You know, yeah. when, you, like, when you get yeah. a call or something? Well, you can measure those vibrations and like you know increase or decrease them and what this guy did this guy in shark tank what he what he showed them is that when he put it on um put it on any flat surface he's measured how much vibration it takes precisely to move the phone like at a certain degrees at an angle so it will just rotate in a 360 degree angle and take a picture like every that right, is you know, insane it'll rotate, stop, take a picture and it does it by itself. Mm. You don't need to buy like a stand. Well, you don't need yeah, to buy like, like, like a how, how would you like prop it up though so that you can actually get a real panorama without it looking at the sky? Yeah. No, no. Uh, you, you lean it on its edge. How do you get it from falling over? Or how do you stop it from falling over? Like an iPhone can just stand on its edge. No, it can't. Yeah, not, it can. a, not a six. Not if it's vibrating. No, you know what? This was back when the five came out. I don't know if I don't know if the yeah. There's no way that would work I don't for know if the six. Can like do I, it. I can see how that would work for like the four S and like, yeah, I guess the five too. But like, there's no way it would work for the six or the six S. This was this was a couple years ago. This was back when like the iPhone okay, yeah. four. Okay, I guess that makes more sense. That makes that, I mean that's yeah. really really cool. Yeah, it's still a really cool concept. Yeah, but you're right. Now, I'm looking at my iPhone right now, and you're right. It can't. It wouldn't be able to see on inside. Dude, people consider those phones block phones, and they never sold Nokia. I went from an uh, iPhone four. Two, uh, six. Holy crap, it's so thin. Oh my god, yeah. I went from a five like to a, a six like S. You can almost bend it. Oh, wait. Oh, you know that's so surprising because you can. <laughs> 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 the touch ID was so useful for me. I didn't re- I didn't think about how, like, how much of a step up that would be. It's such a great. Oh, touch ID is great. I want touch ID on everything. Touch ID, I want yeah. I want that to be on my door. I want that to be on my, be on my like, car. It probably is already on cars, yeah. like a Tesla or something. I'm probably sure. has it. Yeah. Already. I mean, they have like you can you can national treasure it. You know what I'm saying? Like you could you can take um you know you ever see that movie National Treasure where no. they they basically yeah. like okay well basically they they're able to lift a fingerprint 
from something and put it on like a on like the tip of a glove mm-hmm. and then hold yeah. that glove over a fingerprint scanner and it, it it scans and it doesn't actually work for most fingerprint scanners because they have like biometrics and all that stuff to it but um on the iPhone you can do that so technically speaking you could fake your way into an iPhone if you wanted to oh that's interesting but yeah. So maybe my, I don't uh, wouldn't want it on my car or door. But like, my, you know, I'd like that for like my devices. I like that for like, you know, stuff that is kind of locked and I want to have it open. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is like you could end up with something like something happening like off Hancock where he just cuts off his hand and like they'll use it. <laughs> well, I mean, I would imagine you'd it. have to be like either dead or in a very crappy situation for that to ever happen to you. So no, I mean, like, I wouldn't put it on something like a safe or something like that. Like, someone could, like, cut off your finger or something or, and use it. Or, like you just said, with National Treasure, they used, like, a fingerprint lifter to lift off the, the fingerprint and use it. I I mean, I just don't think that's a very realistic scenario that would happen to you unless you have, like, some really know, it's dark, fun, secret though. government NSA secrets hidden in a chest or something. Well, it could be. I doubt anyone's going to cut your hand off to steal your car. TBH, unless it's like a right. ridiculous. Unless it's like car. a Porsche. I, even 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 still, then, that's like not. Yeah, that's like Lamborghini. They have to somehow car. get away with that car, <laughs> so it's it's not like they can just cut off your hand right, and leave exactly. you there unless they're planning on murdering you. Know, like, who murders someone over a car? Over. I mean, I guess it, ha- oh, it happens. It does happen. I'm sorry, Spider Man. It happens. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I just brought back some horrible <laughs> memories that he's repressed. Mm. But okay, now when it comes to like when it comes to technology, there's a lot of improvements that are being made right now that I feel like, alongside the fingerprint scanner, that are going to be like they're going to change the way we do everything. Like if you if you guys had to like sit down and guess what the biggest thing is going to be in like the next ten years, what is going to be like guess. the biggest changes? I believe wearable technology. That is the future. I'm I am all on board with that. Are you are you okay? So are you a, like an augmented reality guy? Are you on board with that? Yes, because I'm I'm so that, that's on board yeah. With see, that's where I think reality. it's going to advance too. Like right now, it's just like little watches and like knickknacks in your hands. I think it's going to advance far past that to the point where like you're augmenting your body. You've got like replacement limbs, that kind of thing, or oh, enhanced man. vision, or stuff like that, or implants or something to the point where like virtual reality schools will not exist. Teaching in the future, and, yeah. and education will all be through virtual reality. I mean, I, I, I kind of miss the uh, like face-to-face interaction. I mean, it would still be face-to-face. Honestly. You'd still have a teacher. It would just be, yeah, it would no, just be through virtual just, reality. You wouldn't... No, you would, like, you no, would no, sync like, up I with actually like away. being there. Schools like, wouldn't go anywhere. You, But you wouldn't go to school. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It w- there wouldn't be a physical location that you would have to go to. You would just have to put it on in your room, yeah. turn it on, and you're in a virtual classroom. With, with a teacher. And you would get obese either because you can replace your body parts. Well, I don't know if um, it'll be that easy. I don't, <laughs> I don't think yeah. you just replace a body part. Well, and you I just said like, you could like, alter your body. It's not like a, like Lego pieces where you can swap no, out. No, like, I thought like, you said you could you possibly alter your body. You, like, you can, like, but you not can, like you can't say. Like just that doesn't equate to oh, you can't get obesity now. <laughs> I just assumed. So, uh... Piper's like, uh, now I have to lose weight the same way uh, in the future. No, you, would still, you, would, you could still get fat if you have... <laughs> even even in the future, I still f- have to fight the fat. Yeah, unless you're going to be a full robot cyborg, you're going to get fat regardless. The oh, war against yeah. fat I would be a robot cyborg. In the year 2083. <laughs> App Lego is taking over the world. I mean, like, if people no. are overweight... Uh, I don't... I, obesity is not the focus for augmented limbs yeah, that no, that's not, not the, like you can already no. augment that you can already get like liposuction and stuff to get rid of obesity if you really wanted that i'm thinking like actual limbs like for people who can't walk or for veterans yeah. who lost limbs in the war or something you know like they could get completely new replacement limbs that would basically have all the functionality and feeling of their old limb that they lost right right that'd exactly. be so Prosthetics strange would, like would, regaining that's where the limb. future is going right. in, in my opinion I think, for, uh, for me, like, a concept I've always had is, like, beyond, like, a smartwatch, actually having, like, technology and, like, screen or something available, but, like, on your skin. Like, 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 kind of like a tattoo, but an interactive tattoo. Mm-hmm. You can, like, that would be interesting. I'm not sure stuff. how 
well that would work though, because like we're so used to seeing like a lot of colors and beautiful displays right. and stuff. I I don't know. I don't know if it would work or not. But I mean that that's when I when I have like a science fiction movie in my head that I'm like you know creating. That's part of the things I see there. Interactive tattoos like shirts. I think something that could come in the future is that they shirts will be able to have an animated design on them. And you'll be able like, to have like, like a kind gift. of gif. Yeah, like a gif on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that will you probably know? end up being big at some point. That would be awesome. I, I, I can't see it not being big if that was possible. Can you believe that? Um, interactive paper. That's what I'm really hoping for. Uh, as someone who like, I know you are, you draw a lot. Interactive well. paper. What do you mean? So like you have, you know, you've, you've drawn on your tablet and yes. stuff, but it's not an actual, they still haven't found a way to emulate an actual paper texture. The, 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 the feeling of paper on a, on like pencil on paper. They haven't been able to replicate that yet. That's still like a thing that's coming uh, later on in the future. I mean, there, there the, are screen protectors that replicate paper texture. Right. But like, it's not, it's not the same though. Right. I know. I mean, like, even though it's not like it's less, uh, less optional, it's just, that feeling for I, for me, especially whenever I'm drawing on like a tablet or something, I, I'm so able to do it and it feels nice and fluid, but there's something refreshing to me about like pencil and paper. I, and I don't think, I don't like think it's the texture because I think they've been able to replicate the texture itself. What I think is it's just the thickness of the glass that causes that <clears throat> discrepancy, unless you're only specifically talking about like a bamboo tablet. But for like the surface, for me, the only difference between using my surface and using pen and paper is that there is like that little small amount of thickness due to the glass from where your pin touches to where it actually yeah. appears on the document. There's like a little bit of space in between that. And that's definitely yeah. noticeable. But if they were able to completely like reduce that to like paper thin, then right. then that would like that the change would be completely like Well I hear that the new iPad Pro pine note back in the new iPad Pro has the Apple Pencil and the reason why they have both these products is that it, that's the closest they've come yet. Uh, there's no space in between. So it's virtually lagless. You draw something and it's there. That's interesting. I mean, la- I mean, once again, like, like lag and space is two different things too. Right, sure. Issues. I mean, like, but I mean, like the the space in between the thing is. Like, yeah. But you know, having like a screen that's foldable, having a screen that you know you can turn around, like an actual paper that you can fold. Gotta say though, stuff with. it it was kind of rich having like seeing Apple claim that that was an original idea. Yeah, it, that it was, was a complete like, yeah. rip off the I, surface. The iPad, the iPad Pro. Listen, ever it literally since has Steve the same Jobs name as the died. Surface Pro. <laughs> <laughs> ever since Steve Jobs died, I haven't seen a lot of new designs come out of yeah, Apple. Yeah, agree. Outside of yeah, iOS, yeah, I 7. agree. And uh, the the thing I see, I use this on Reddit all the time. As soon as someone posts about, oh, Steve Jobs is really great, and they're like, well, he didn't actually, he didn't know how to code, and he wasn't an engineer, and he didn't really do all new stuff. He was just a good salesman, and. That is, that, I feel like that's a complete underestimation of what Jobs was. Job is, Jobs was never at any point a good salesman. A good salesman can sell you anything. Jobs could not sell you anything. He had good Jobs, ideas though. Jobs knew what you wanted to buy. That's what his thing. Jobs couldn't, a good salesman would be able to sell any product you gave right. to him. Right. Just he, by being, yeah, you would be, he would be able to sell you like right. a completely useless thing that you didn't want before. A useless thing. John like, sell me this what pen people mentality wanted. thing. And yeah. he would, he would stick to his guns. And sometimes, it, like, sometimes there were failures, but he paid off so many times for him. He was an innovator that knew what people wanted before they wanted it. He, when, as soon as he saw, like, folders, he saw, like, a GUI, he saw, you know, like, that, the whole thing. Back then, <laughs> people just typed into a computer. The moment he saw it, he's like, that needs to happen. And he pushed for so many features that a lot of engineers are like, this is, I don't know why anybody would need to use this. One big thing in the early, uh, you know, trivia, early Apple stuff, you couldn't overlap um, Windows. Like if you had right now, like I have Skype, right? And yep. I can pull it to one side and it oh, overlaps. Yeah, like it's, the, uh... yeah. yeah, it's overlapping Audacity right now. And he wanted that to happen. And the engineers were like, Steve, this is impossible. We can't do this. There's no way we can do it. And Jobs was like, yeah, you, there's a way to do it. And they're like, no, I'm telling you, we can't do it. And Jobs was like, you're going to do it or you're, you're going to be fired. And I'm going to find someone who can't do it. And the guy's like, all right, and he did it. And that's it. That's, that's how we get Windows right now. That's, and the iPhone, remember when the iPad came out? You guys remember when the iPad yeah. came iPad out? iPad was stupid yeah. when it came out. iPad, I remember before the, before the iPad came out, 
everybody was la- it was the laughing stock. It was yeah, I remember this. Of it's iPad. like who is like call my so it's it's a bigger iPhone. Yeah. So like, yeah, am I gonna call? call my friend on this giant thing? What the yeah. heck? No, it's like and it, you can't call from it. You just use the app. It's like who. Who on earth is going to use this? Who's going to go in the like? Almost, yeah, who uh, wants a bigger iPhone that you the can carry in your pocket? The majority of the first world countries. It came out, and then like I, I remember this because I, I saw these things beforehand. <laughs> I'm like, it, it is kind of stupid. I don't know why I go after it, but it came out, and then everybody's like, "Okay, this is actually really cool." I want it. Yeah, <laughs> this is a really, this is a really good <laughs> I mean, idea. I remember it annoyed me a lot because every... I use graphics tablets, which you know it was right. specifically for drawing, and right. now Apple was like coding this word tablet to something that meant like a piece of technology that was completely different than what I associated with it, which is really annoying. Right, exactly. I had to adapt. But uh But with that said but though, man. like yeah, I mean I still think the original iPod iPad was kind of stupid. It, it's progressed a lot more since then. But the same thing was mm-hmm. also could be said with the iPhone. I remember seeing the iPhone originally and being like, what what is the point of it? Because like it didn't have apps. Yeah, it didn't have it apps. So it was like so it's just an iPod Touch it's with a phone. Just a touchscreen phone. So is it really like? So why are they still selling the iPod Touch then? Why would you buy the iPod Touch and not the iPhone? So I, it, it kind of confused yeah. me why there's like these two different products, but obviously it's progressed since then. I will say right. that um, with the new iPad Pro though, the uh, the pin is actually really interesting. The technology that goes into that. Um, I don't think from personal experience using tablets for a while now, um, graphics tablets. I don't think I've used a pin that registers um what was it uh angle the angle of which you were drawing it's always been yeah. pressure sensitivity and it's always been like um no yeah basically just pressure sensitivity yeah pressure but I, yeah, yeah i've never had a pin that actually measured like the angle that's really right. interesting that's the thing i'm interested in because for shading i used to shade yeah all that the makes time. things really yeah. easy yeah, for shading. shading is shading was the hardest part for me to figure out when it came to digital art mm-hmm. and with this i think that would really help the angle will also, I feel, help like do with curves and like the, yes. the weight. Yeah. Because even though pressure is important to get that weight, but like when you when you draw something in a curve, you lean it to an angle so that you get like a bit more or a bit less. Yeah. Or if you're like and sketching and you just want to go over light. Yeah. And people, I feel, have unlearned that over time because they're not, you know, they just haven't gotten used to, yeah. that, to that working. I just, I really do want an iPad Pro. I want to try that out. I want it. I don't want it at the same so time. I, w- I wish it had a full OS. Like, I wish it, had, it was running on full Mac OS uh, and not right. iOS because I can't see the use of that technology going into a mobile platform. It, it, that, that kind of stuff should be used for full budget programs like Photoshop. If you can't, yeah. if you can't install the full grade Photoshop on the iPad Pro, it's completely useless to me because I need Photoshop. I can't just use an app that lets you doodle. I completely agree. I think that the reason we're doing this now is because they have to do this. They have to get this product out first. And, and then, then they can brush it out. I get you. Right. That makes sense. Because additionally, I think the, the thing that's going in the future, Adobe is going to make a fully featured version of Photoshop for the, uh, what? <laughs> Adobe. <laughs> Adobe. It's Adobe. Right. It's Adobe, dude. Is it Adobe? It's, not, it's Adobe, it's not Adobe. Adobe. It's a dokey. I swear I've heard it from Adobe. Adobe! I, I, I swear that's something legitimate. <laughs> oh, you swear every mispronunciation is legitimate. I, I can't believe it. Well, that's because it. at some point it is. Listen, it's the, Adobe, the, not Adobe. Okay. The, the only time I was sneezing, Photoshop. you say that. Photoshop is going to be developed in the, like, a fully featured Photoshop that's touch compatible. Will be available on iOS for download. Well, Photoshop point. is already touch compatible, but not. It's not optimized for iOS. Right. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. what Apple. Well, see, the thing is, I'm pretty so, sure there already is a Photoshop app that's either already out there or being worked on. There is. No, there is a Photoshop app, but it's not. Fully yeah, but featured. I need. Like, I need fully featured thing. Photoshop. I need, I need I to have access to all the I, tools. That, that's what I'm saying. They're wanting the iPad Pro. This first iteration is going to come out, and people are going to gravitate towards it. And then, now they have this market, then the companies can go, "Okay, now we're going to develop like transfer it first. Yeah, now now we're going to tweak the versions that we have right now in order to yeah. to work with. This I new will thing. say that because the iPad Pro is really big. Like like I mentioned earlier, when uh when they initially announced the, f- the original iPad, I was really annoyed because it was taking away that like perspective of a graphics tablet for me. Boy, was I naive because thank God for the iPad. Because yes. that, that made Microsoft start the Surface. Thank God for the mm-hmm. Surface Pro. 
because now there are so many options for artists to get like to exactly. find a good tablet yeah. that does what they need it to. Before a, it was a just Wacom. screen too. Before it was just Wacom who was like right. who made these ridiculously expensive tablets like the ones that actually had a screen were ridiculous. So yeah, now I, now I it's actually competitive tablet. and now it's actually consumer friendly. So thank God for that. Well, I have like a I have like a drawing like tablet like you connect it to your computer and like a bamboo it's basically like a mouse yeah that'd be like a bamboo yeah i mean all, all graphics tablets would act as a, a mouse like a surface would act as a mouse yeah but um right yeah i'm assuming you have like a bamboo then uh yeah a bamboo mm-hmm. so do you have you, yeah no oh, yeah, it's right you don't have photoshop getting, and the difference between like getting a tablet and getting like one of the the screen tablets a monitor tablets a monitor tablet was a huge investment it was several thousand dollars to get one of those you couldn't see what you were drawing. You had to like draw on the tablet and see your thing, you know, happen on the computer. Yeah. And with the the advent of the iPad, so many people started making tablets. They just they pushed that in. That the Surface does that now. The Surface costs what? Uh, if you get a low level Surface, that's like what eight hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. For it's a lot. computer, that's a, that's insane. The fact that Apple like they forced that to happen. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't know who's going to be innovating stuff now. Right now, it I can't. I don't know what company is doing new tech stuff. Uh, like, I, Microsoft has surprisingly been doing a lot of... I mean, they seem to have been doing a lot more um, experimentation with their current yes. stuff than anyone else with has. With HoloLens, basically. Yeah. So I think Microsoft's but, kind of pulled yeah. up the slack that Apple's kind of fallen behind on ever since Jobs died. Um, right. With that said, another like thing that I think is going to be the future as far as like where... Technology advances. Everything, everything is going to be digital. F- physical be items digital. is going to be a thing of the past. Like, for so- I mean, obviously there's going to be physical things still, but like a lot of things that we use now, like I mean, we've had me and you are on the same page here. But like, physical books are useless. Digital books yeah, no, all no, the way. No, no, no. I think that See, I'm, it, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm physical video thing. games practically dead. If anyone has actually got an Xbox One right now and they are actually buying games digitally. I highly doubt you're still buying physical as well. Right. There's like, there's no point. I mean, it might be a little bit more expensive, but it's so much more convenient to be able to just switch between games without well, having to get up. The only thing I have to say is that I, I think the one thing that would draw them back is if they don't have enough memory on their Xbox One right now. So yeah, yeah but you can game. get more memory for like the price of another game. Right, but that's like that's two stuff you have to buy. If right now I wanted to buy, I wanted to play a game, you know, I'd buy that thing. See, well, I you still have to install it, though, con- even when you get a physical game, though. That is true, and that's something that I feel, yeah, I'm with you, that is going in the past. My, I mean, we say, like, you know, when we say everything's going digital, we don't actually mean, we, our entire channel is based off a toy. The toy still needs to be physical. Like, I wouldn't buy a model of Tahu on, like, a digital Well, you say that, but then what about HoloLens? Ho- no, HoloLens... You're right with Hollands, but Hollands will just be a video game. It'll be interactive video. Right, but like video games are replacing toys. They are replacing toys. True. The app, like kids, aren't playing with toys anymore. They have iPads. They're playing games in the App Store now. Minecraft basically eliminated the toy company. <laughs> I mean, like Lego is really the only big one right now. They're on- the only toy company that's really succeeding. Every everyone else, I feel, has kind of faltered a little bit ever since yeah, technology stagnated. started been going. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. I, I especially do with there. 3D printers being a thing now, too, where you can just print your own that's toys. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's all I was going to say. 3D printers are going to change a lot. Yeah, so, I mean, I think basically we're going to have virtual video, interactive video games that are basically going to, going to replace toys. And for physical toys, people are just going to print them. Toy companies are going to go out of business. Toy companies will... No, toy Unless they will, adapt like, to the 3D become printer. design companies. Yeah, I, yeah. Like schematic companies. Yeah, schematic companies. Uh, or I mean, like that being said, you know, Lego has a quality of plastic you can't just print. That is all. That is also true. So yeah, you right. would go to Lego to get the quality, the quality stuff. But I mean, for a lot of other toys like GI Joes, they're gonna become extinct. Yeah, very soon I feel. Right. Uh, and it's it's also gonna be easier for people to enter the toy market than ever before. That's the same true. way it's easier for us to enter the video market. Beforehand, you would have to not only buy all your cameras and your you know mics and all that stuff and get a whole production thing. You have to pay for that. Then you also have to find something to distribute it. Mm-hmm. With toys, if I wanted to make my own toy line, I couldn't do it now because I'd have to like new model and then have to start a business and then have to get like manufacturers and sell to all these distributors. 
But in the future, I can model a toy on my 3D, you know, just like on a 3D modeler and then print it off for myself and be like, okay, this works and upload it somewhere and then pe- other people all around the world can buy it and download it for me. Yeah. So yeah. That's something that can be... I, I will do one thing in, in, uh, in Africa for physical books. I do... There are certain things I like having physical so I can look at them. And for me, that's like, that's hardcover books. The only thing I buy anymore are hardcover books. I basically never buy software. And that's just for like collector's item and displaying and like, you know, having, for me, it's all graphic novels. I buy all my graphic novels hardcover and display them. I I was going to say that if you're someone like me who forgets their passwords all the time, because of how many passwords you have to remember these days. Like, I've lost like so many accounts where I've paid for like things and I can never get them back because they've either been terminated due to me not being active on there or I've just forgotten the password and I can't get back into them. So it's like, it's nice to have a backup for something in case you lose something or something gets hacked or something like that. Cause hacking is going to get worse if we're going to have more technology about. So yeah, I feel like, yeah. I mean, hacking will definitely get worse. Basically. I, I feel like in the future, another thing that'll happen is will be that most warfare will all be mm-hmm. cyber. Cyber. Cyber warfare. Definitely. Cyber terrorists cyber will be bigger than big actual deal. terrorists. And yeah, cyber security. Yep. And cyber. Yeah, just a lot of that stuff is going to be a bigger deal than it was before. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get flying cars, to be, to be honest. The, okay, the only way we're going to get flying cars is if we get a good energy efficient power source. The the reason we have the technology to make, like, we know how Fusion. to make flying cars. Yeah, they've existed for we years. We just don't now. know how to power them. Yeah. That's the whole point. Like, someone was saying that, like, you could, we could make a lightsaber right now, but it would have to be connected to a nuclear power plant to be charged. That's why we don't have lightsabers. Yeah. So, we need to find uh, a good, like, efficient energy source that's almost, you know, virtually... That's the one thing we haven't really Fusion. gotten done yet. It's like, it feels like technology has progressed so much, but we still haven't really found alternatives to, like, fuel and power and things that can really help. <sighs> or at least if we have, they haven't really become, like, the norm yet. They haven't been adapted well, by too anyone. Well, that's too dangerous. I mean, like okay, fusion. Let's, uh, this is going to sound some conspiracy theorist-esque, but... If you discovered that, and you made a bunch of money off oil, why would you give that to people right no, away? No, you were right. And, uh, I don't think it's that right conspiracy theorist, actually. I, I, be- I, I believe I, that I mean, is like, legitimately the case. I remember this story from a guy. I don't know how true it is. Uh, but it was a guy, a friend of mine, and he told this story about how he, his uncle was like, used to work, I mean, my uncle used to work, right? His uncle worked for like, uh, back in, this was back in the 70s or like early 80s. And he worked for like a high level guy that was in, uh, in like Samsung or Sony, one of the big tech companies. And one day he went up and he saw this computer screen and it was completely, it was one of the most advanced things he had seen. It was fully color, this is back in, you know, back early, fully color, it was huge. It was like, you know, the, the size of big display TVs we see now. It was a, a super crisp resolution and it was like they were, they had some, they had, uh, it wasn't touch compatibility, but it was like something going on with it. There was like a lot of, you know, they're, they're experimenting with it. And he was like, why don't you just sell that? He's like, he's like he, they're at the top of the skyscraper and he pointed down, he's like, why don't you sell that down there? If you sold it down there, you will make so much money off this thing. This is like, decades beyond what we were using that, you know, everyone's using. And the guy said, yes, I could sell this right now down there. Or I could sell everything in between down there and up here until they get to up here and make that much more money. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching a documentary sort of like that where like there was like this hybrid car that was actually built like years, years before Tesla and all this other big stuff that actually used like a – like you could just plug it in and charge it and everything. This is really early on too, like early 2000 maybe before that. But there was this hybrid car that was like the perfect car that everyone would love but – I forget what car company was it. It might have been GM, but there was like a car company that um was selling it, but they intentionally underplayed it as much as possible so that people would have no desire to buy it. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, people would continue to buy the more costly but more lucrative other cars, you know? Um, I remember seeing a documentary about that, so I I definitely think that's something that happens if if someone did find that out they would like it would be a, it would be a huge discussion between all the rich people be like all right 
a lot of our jobs are going to be gone well, soon. Well, a lot of we uh, a lot so. of um, cars, uh, Volkswagens, I believe, have been taken back into a production due to someone making a bug in the system. Yeah, that, that was uh, a fake I remember emissions. That story. Yeah. I remember that, yeah. That was recent. That proves that there are greedy people out yeah, there, but at the same care. time, that I'm profit. sure that there's people out there who legitimately want I'm sure there are, but the issue is that those people always work it's for people. It's just people, those people are under shackles, basically. Yeah. Because, alright, the people that are in charge of businesses are good business people. You can't be a good business person and be like, no, I'll give things out for free. It's like, the, the very nature of you being there at the top means that you had to be ruthless to get there. You can't, yeah. like... If you if you were nice and you gave everything out to people, you wouldn't be in charge of a huge business. Mm-hmm. That's not how... This is how it works. With that said, like, a hey, lot of know. jobs, that's another thing the future is gonna... Oh, start. okay, yeah. This is... Uh, job I want to talk about away. this real quick. I know we're, we're have kind you of tra- running yeah, over we're time Yeah, we're running out of time. Make it fast. I, 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 I do want to ask you real quick. Have you, have you tried Uber yet? I have not tried Uber. Uber is not available in my city. Oh, I live in a small town. Interesting. Okay. It is available here. I haven't tried it yet, but... uh. Okay, I, w- I want to try it soon, and we should talk about, like, do a podcast later on about it. But there, there's two big things that have happened recently. One is Uber versus taxi companies. And there was a city recently where all these taxi companies, like, they blocked the town square. And they, they, they stopped people from getting to work and getting to the airport and getting to all that stuff because they were protesting Uber. And the idea is that Uber, they had, do have some legitimate points that Uber uh, does not pay, like, Uber pays their employees. If able you don't to, know like, what Uber is, it's basically a... Uh cheaper taxi service that's like an app on your right. phone that you can access and right. someone will come and pick you. you up basically someone will come pick you up and they'll drop you off yep. and you can you'll rate them afterwards and you know you just keep going really around. cheap compared um, to taxi super super cheap really really cheap and there's and it's also the service is way better now they don't have a lot of the the insurance sure like you know that that's the big deal the com- taxi company saying is that they don't pay for insurance the same way we pay for it and you know there's a lot of stuff that goes into how uh how taxis are done and that's why they have to charge so much. But every – like I read so many testimonials of people being like, yeah, I was totally on the taxi driver's side. But then I had to take an Uber for whatever reason. A taxi wouldn't come out to where I was. And it was clean. It was efficient. I paid I, – I got in. I hit the app. The guy came. I said, I need to go here. He dropped me off. It was quick. There wasn't anything for it. I, you know, I paid it with my phone so I didn't have to go and like, you know, the credit card. I have the meter run. He didn't do anything shady to get out of that. He was just paid there, you know, for the thing. And everyone I've heard said that Uber is a way better experience. Yeah, that's the thing with taxis is taxi. they're shady as heck too. Like I remember yeah. when we took a taxi in uh, New York, the guy didn't even oh – the guy gave us like a flat rate for half of the trip basically. Yes. He drove us remember the whole took- way and he was like, okay, so that's going to be double what I told you before. I can't believe – I was so stupid. I should have gotten an Uber. I, I don't I don't know why I didn't Did think Uber about it. Did Uber York. Fr- it's New York freaking city, man. Of course Uber's there. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. You're right, huh? Yeah, I no, I was it was stupid of me not to do that. I I guarantee you, we that cost me what like a hundred dollars. It was forty five dollars. No, it was like ninety dollars at the end of that. Ninety dollars to go there. It was like maybe a fifteen minute trip. They they always underplay the actual cost. They're like they'll tell you Mm -hmm. like half a cost or find some kind of way to be like, oh yeah, by the way, it's gonna be more than what you thought it was. Right, taxis so I. Taxis are yeah, terrible. Yeah, what, what is the like point? What if you've only just got enough and it's like, oh, there's double now? Like, you told me at the beginning you're supposed to estimate yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But like sometimes, I mean, you can't do anything about it. It's He's just like, inconvenient. Well, so that's a big thing that's going on now. And I, a lot of people are saying that like, I mean, taxis are dying because well, of they Uber. need to step up their game. Then they need that's to step the whole point of business. Like, you got to step they, up I mean, your game. There was no competitors to taxis before, so. But now, additionally, though, what happened recently was Target, for the first time since this I heard it was about. formed, this yeah, this one I was talking about last week. Target, for the first time, they had a union form under Target. A union came and they wanted to get higher wages from Target. And I, I I've heard that Target plays is pay. Yeah. I've heard that they pay their employees pretty well. Of the uh, uh, major retailer chains, I believe Target is one of the better ones. The worst right, being right. like Amazon and Walmart, right? Um, but yeah, no, yeah, I'm pretty sure Target usually has better benefits to their employees than other retailers are, right? Concerned. And so they recently formed a union, and the union was, uh, you know, they, the union formed. They're like, all right, we're, we want to, uh, we want to compete for better hours. And Target came and said, okay, 
the day after the Union formed, they put out a press release saying that they're going to be partnering with this new uh, robotic company in order to produce robots that will, like, a, a, a target that will be completely run by robots. They're going to do the first store of its kind and develop it in one of these places. And they plan to phase that out and they, they plan to expand from that. Right when that so, union was formed. So it's the first time a union was formed and and I don't know how long they've been planning this. Obviously, they didn't just get it done in one day. It's been planned beforehand. But it's so it's so ironic timing. A union forms the day after Target says, we're going to be planning to re- replace you with robots. It's <laughs> almost like a thing where it's like... It's like they were waiting. <laughs> they were waiting for this to happen. <laughs> They're like, they oh, you think been, you're going to yeah. rebel against us? Well, here's They're our Trump card. They're waiting to trample on their party. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you think you have rights. <laughs> silly, <laughs> silly people. Oh, man. Yeah. And then you get into the subject of the, the machine versus man versus machine. That's a big thing that's going to that's gonna be a big that's issue a in the future. big topic. A lot of, that's going to be a big issue. See, my thought, my, my idea of the future is basically deus ex. <laughs> People are going to be augmented and have new awesome things, but there's going to be this big stigma against robotics and against um, automatic machines and everything. And then that's going to translate to people who are also against augmented people. Right, right. So yeah, that makes sense. That's well, that's going to be where the new the new hatred racism comes from. Well, listen, there's going to be a thing where McDonald's people are not going to be able to get the uh, like the same jobs anymore because they have robots running McDonald's. It's a it's a fast food chain, dude. Yeah. iPads are replacing computers now. Mm-hmm. It's ticking me off. iPads are stupid. I mean, iPads are great, but they're not a a computer replace. Oh my god. Okay, we have to end. I'm a prime know, example. I'm going to end on saying. Said. Parents, if you're watching this, stop buying your kids iPads and iPhones yeah, as a replacement no. for a computer. If your kid wants a computer, get them a freaking computer. It's not the because same thing. IPads, the iPads are easier for young kids to use and just get used to using them. And then they grow up and they all they, they want to use an iPad because they know how that works. And parents know how that works. That's why. <sighs> but you do try. Oh, man. So many things. Fast food truck drivers are going to be out of the job, truck and a lot of the economy job. around, like, oh, the wait, Midwest we gotta wrap is going to... So, um, oh, my God. We get into this right at the end. Yep. Okay. So, All right. Well, yeah, it's it's been going on quite long enough. It's been way um, too long, so maybe we'll do a yeah, part two Yeah, way too long. This is a podcast. Yeah. Let's right. end. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Kahi. I'm Var. I'm Viper. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, be sure to check us out in Vessel Watch Book Club. Oh Yay. yeah, yeah. So, uh, video is exclusive video to Vessel. You can watch the audio Vessel. version on uh, on YouTube. But we've got a special extra um, video webcam version that was released in Vessel for free, so you can check that out as well. Right. Yep. You can see all our lovely faces. Yep. Vessel.com forward slash TTV channel. Exactly. See you all next time, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.